I'm Jacqueline Black, Abigail Hagen, and Grace Hollander. Our project is A Legacy in the Sky, Jacqueline Cochran and Nancy Love. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 1938 Bendix Transcontinental Air Race from Los Angeles to Cleveland, the world's fastest, most dangerous air race. If you remember, Amelia Earhart competed in 1935, taking fifth place. It looks like women think they can race as well as men, with Nancy Love taking second in last year's competition. Well, we all know that it's a man's place in the cockpit, and I'm sure that this year will be no different. I hear a plane coming our way now. It's Jackie Cochran in her silver P-35 winning the race at a blistering 250 miles per hour. Ladies and gentlemen, these women know how to race planes. Why, if it isn't the ever so famous Nancy Love, I've just been dying to meet you. I've heard so much about you in your air racing competitions. As you know, I compete as well. We women have to stick together. Jackie Cochran, congratulations on winning the Bendix. You are right about sticking together, but during races and such, I never really want to start a fuss with those men. They can be so disrespectful sometimes that all us women want to do is fly with them. Thank you, and you see my point. I've been watching Europe, and I think a war might break out. England's going to need our help, so we need to prepare now. I hope to be corresponding soon with Eleanor Roosevelt to start a women's flying group to relieve male pilots for combat duty. What do you think of that idea? I have actually had the very same idea. What do you think of a ferrying squadron? I like it, but I'm thinking bigger, bolder, more women flying. Dear Eleanor Roosevelt, the year is 1939, and we still don't have women flying? I am proposing that we start a women's flying division in the Army Air Forces. I feel that qualified female pilots could do all of the domestic, non-combat aviation jobs necessary in order to release more male pilots for combat. Women could be used effectively in all sorts of helpful back-of-the-lines work, as for instance, flying transport planes, thereby releasing male pilots for combat duty. I would greatly appreciate your thoughts and help. Thank you. Sincerely, Jacqueline Cochran. Eleanor Roosevelt. Miss Cochran, I received your letter and I found it very intriguing. I understand that you propose to start a woman's flying division in the U.S. Army Air Forces. I will take it into consideration, but in the meantime, on the advice of Lieutenant Colonel Olds, may I ask you to research how many women pilots there are in the United States and their interest in flying for the country. Yes, ma'am. I'm already studying the information from the Civil Aeronautics Board and I'll have the report to you as soon as possible. Dear Colonel Olds, May 1940, I am proposing the use of women pilots in the military. I've been able to find 49 qualified women pilots I can read as excellent material. I am really looking forward to hearing your thoughts and help. Sincerely, Nancy Harkness Love. Why, that was fast. Now what did he say? <laughs> Dear Nancy, I received your letter about women pilots in the military. I found the idea very interesting, and it's definitely a first, but I think I'm willing to take a chance. Please contact General Pap Arnold to see his take on the subject. Best wishes, Colonel Olds. Well, I'm on my way to see General Arnold now. Hello, General. Ah, oh, Nancy, was there something you wanted to speak to me about? Yes, I suggested the idea of women pilots in the military to Lieutenant Colonel Olds, and he's willing to try it, but wanted your consent first before going forward with it. Nancy, the use of women pilots serves no military purpose to this country, which has adequate manpower at this time. Woman pilots in the military. What were you thinking? You are dismissed. I really thought you'd feel differently about this, sir. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy, the United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. Nancy, do you recall back in 1940 when you came to and requested the use of female pilots in the military? Well, the attack on Pearl Harbor has shaken everybody up quite a bit and has had to change his mind. Get those women organized and you shall become the leader of the law. The Women's Auxiliary Ferrying Squadron, September 1942. The training shall begin. Thank you, sir. We will not let you down. Nancy Love announced leader of the WAFs? No, this can't be right. I have to talk to General Arnold this instant. General Arnold, what is the meaning of this? I just read that you put Nancy Love in 
charge of the WAPS, when I, clearly superior choice for leader of this type of program, had to hear of this upsetting news from the newspaper. I set 73 records in just three years, participated in many air competitions, not to mention I won the Bendix in 1938 and was the first woman flying solo to do so. Hap, what more do you want? Now listen here, Jackie. I put Nancy in charge of this because she came to me first. She already had 49 excellent woman pilots willing to participate in this program. And what about all my work with Eleanor Roosevelt? I went to her first in 1939, and I really have been progressing forward. Yes, Nancy is a marvelous flyer, but sir, isn't there some way I can be a part of this as well? I suppose we can try and get something up and running, but let's face reality for a minute. Two groups of women flying in the military. Congress is never going to allow this. They hardly passed the idea for one group. Oh, don't you worry, Hap. Just leave that to me. Oh, Jackie, the WASP program is just coming along swell. The girls are learning navigation, meteorology, radio, morse code, and so much more. But oh, how I wish you were commanding with me. Well, Nancy, I just might be. We can work together and win this war. You with your WASPs and I with my WFTDs, Women's Flying Training Detachment that Hap just appointed me head of. We'll come together and form the WASP, the Women Air Force Service Pilots, and we'll show those men just who they're dealing with. Well, let's get those women training then. I'm a flying bird, so risk my neck and a hell of a pilot too. I'm a hell of 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 a pilot too. for women in the wa in the Air Force now that we are winning the war. Hello and welcome to the 67th anniversary of the start of the WASP on this beautiful 5th of August, 2010. Back in 1942, some 25,000 women applied to join the WASP. Only 1,830 of them were accepted and took the oath. 1,074 of these women actually passed the training and earned their wings. And sadly, 38 of these courageous women died while flying. We are here today to honor and remember these women who fought for equality, to show the boys that we can fly just as well as they can. Now, let me introduce myself. I am Sally Ride, and on June 18, 1983, I became the first U.S. woman in space. Now, if it wasn't for the leadership of Jacqueline Cochran, Nancy Love, and the legacy of the WASP, I would have never achieved my dream. I am forever grateful. And now, on to our next speaker of the night, the first person to break the sound barrier, General Chuck Yeager. Thank you. In 1953, Jacqueline Cochran broke the sound barrier. I know because I was her wingman when she did it. Jackie went on to hold more speed and altitude records than anyone alive at her time, and that record still stands today. Nancy Harkness Love was awarded the Air Medal for her operational leadership in the successful training and assignment of over 300 qualified women flyers in the flying of advanced military aircraft. Colonel Love continued to champion for women who had served as WASPs. They were awarded veteran status in 1977, and then in 2009, President Obama awarded these women the Congressional Gold Medal. And for the final speaker of the night, the first female Thunderbird pilot, Captain Nicole Malachowski. Thank you, General. The loss rates during World War II were staggering. We lost 57,000 aircraft during the war. That was about 170 aircraft and 220 aircrew per day. Thank goodness for the creation of the WASPs to free up men for the front line and to get aircraft ferried around the U.S. for delivery and training. We thank the WASPs so women can fly in the military, like me. Jacqueline Cochran and Nancy Love led the way for women in aviation and by left a legacy by showing the world what we ladies can do when we set our minds to something. We salute you.